days is just around the corner and morning at 10 TV and NTV as a whole we continue counting down to this particular special day for our mothers with a focus on issues that affect various health aspects of this special women this morning we are looking at the burden of iron deficiency anemia and how it affects the mother and child's health well, anemia during pregnancy is especially a concern because it is associated with low birth weight, premature birth, and maternal mortality. Women who are pregnant are at a higher risk of developing anemia due to the excess amount of blood the body produces to help provide nutrients for the baby. Iron deficiency anemia is extremely common, particularly in the developing world, reaching a state of global epidemic. So why not donate some blood? this Mother's Day to save lives. We are joined by Michael Mukundane, who is the coordination, um, program coordinator blood donor recruitment at the Uganda Blood Transfusion Services, and uh, Patience Chikonko, the marketing manager, and Nina Interiors. Uh, you have another name, Binta, Binta. that uh, Mala has fallen in love <laughs> with. And um, as soon as she did, I was um, tempted to ask Binta, where did you get that name? But let's not get into that. Um, First of all, um, I don't know where we should start. Let's start with Nina Interiors here. You are known for selling furniture. Um, we should come when we are looking for a new table. Meanwhile, we are looking for a new table. Um, um, probably not round. Um, she doesn't like round things. So we're probably looking at something square. That's where we should come to yes. your shop. Yes. How do you get involved in blood donations? Um, Nina Interiors has been in business for over 28 years wow and uh, I, I i usually say we are the only furniture shop in uganda okay retail furniture and uh, furnishings however we have survived or we have lived or we have grown in this market on the shoulders of our customers mm -hmm. on the shoulders of our well-wishers our partners and our friends and um we as Nina Interiors, um, our family business, yeah, and uh, one of the things that we are passionate about is helping women and children grow in society. Mm -hmm. So we've been supporting women, skilling them, giving them um, uh, so many opportunities to grow as women in society. And one of the things that we looked at this year is how do we give back in terms of life? Because you can support women all you want, but if they're losing blood, if they have yeah. no life, then you are not doing enough. Mm -hmm. So this year we are calling on everybody, calling on our customers, on our friends, on the, the viewers um, right now to come down to Nina Interiors and donate blood. And this blood, we are saying as Nina Interiors, we would like to give it specifically to mothers and children because they are the ones who need this blood. I was interacting so much with the blood bank and the statistics are phenomenal on who takes this blood and how much blood is needed by the women and children. Mm. Yes. You know, we were having this conversation earlier this um, year, Mr. Michael, and mm. we were talking about the deficit that we have in terms of blood mm. um, in the health facilities. Mm. What does this mean ideally? When you look at that particular deficit, what does it mean in terms of people just coming out to make sure that we bridge that gap? Mm. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, as the National Blood Bank, uh, the Uganda Blood Transfusion Service, uh, the Ministry of Health, every year we set an annual target for blood that we collect to meet the needs of all the patients with severe anemia in the country. And there are quite a number of categories of those that need blood when they get severe anemia. And these are mothers, their children, cancer patients, accident victims, the sicklers, uh, and all those that have other conditions that may require blood from time to time, mm -hmm. uh, where uh, the uncertainties do happen and they lose a lot of blood. So such numbers uh, we project every year in our planning and set targets. Mm -hmm. And uh, this year, our annual target is 300,000 units of blood. 300,000 units of blood means we shall require about 350,000 individuals to have donated this blood to screen and get safe units, which are 300,000 units, mm -hmm. to give to hospitals, to all health facilities that transfuse 
all that uh, administer blood on two patients with severe anemia. Where do you stand at now? How many uh, units do we have currently? Uh, uh, we, we are in the last quarter of the year mm -hmm. and uh, I'm sure we are, we are remaining with uh, three months to go uh, to 30th June and uh, we already are uh, around 180,000 units of blood we are okay. collecting okay. as a country. So we hope to meet the target. Uh, we, we are looking at meeting the target of 300,000 units, such that cases of mothers, cases of cancer patients, all of those that with severe anemia can really benefit and they can also have another laughter and can have another smile and can get up better or can be treated. You know, blood is a drug like any other drug. Right. Save for the fact that it is not got on the shelf. Like maybe you go to a pharmacy and get Panadol. Mm. So this blood has to come from voluntary individuals that are non-remunerated. And in this case, that is why one of our strategies is to continuously pattern with the corporate institutions like Nina Interiors, like KNTV we've done before, like NSSF, the Insurance Association, Media Houses, and many other companies out there, mm. along other strategies going to communities with, uh, where we have community resource persons, and we continue collecting blood. Our job or our mandate as a blood bank is to collect blood, test process, and distribute it to health facilities as for their requests in order to treat these patients with severe anemia. Mr. Mkundane, let me stick with you. And um, this is not aimed at putting you in a corner because um, we need to get Ugandans to feel that they can do this. Yeah. And the only way that we're going to be able to do that yeah. is to give them assurance, is to give them um, a good feel about what they are about to do. Because you see, some of us don't want to be pierced. Sure. But for me to go there and allow to be pierced, mm. it really has to be not just a good cause, but I have to make sure that I am donating my blood and it's going to get to where it is supposed or meant to go. Sure. We have had stories last year towards the end of the year mm. where we freely actually we don't freely give we, we invest some money transport i jump on a border border from here all the way to nina interiors and then back and sometimes give me a soda which some of us <laughs> don't like but then we hear stories running right here on ntv that people are selling this blood. Mm. We have had those stories running in the papers, um, in, in right here on NTV News. Mm. Have you cleared this gap? Because one will be concerned. I have seen people selling blood that I am freely going to give. Mm -hmm. Is it going to happen again? Or have you addressed that issue? Yeah, well, uh, we've been addressing this issue. Just like uh, you hear it. I do hear it. It's an allegation that blood is sold. As a national blood bank... Is it an allegation? Have you investigated well, into the allegations? Yeah, yeah. We, we, it's an allegation until it is proved. You know? uh, the issue here is people come and say, I was told to pay for blood yeah. for my patient. Mm. Then you ask, did you get a receipt? No. Did you get to know who sold the blood to you? You know, I was in Kaolo, I went to Mulago, so and so say, give us uh, some money. But you know, this is an unethical act, and it's an act of corruption. Correct. That we do condemn. It, it's just like if you, you, you are on the road, and, and you are arrested for a traffic offense, somehow you, you give money to the police officer, and then you say, I, I have paid for my sin. This is what is happening. We are trying to follow up such cases which come up. Uh, we, we, the, I remember in the past, they had to arrest some people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it all, uh, we have written to some health facilities where these allegations come from. We have tried to follow up some cases. But, you know, uh, the giver and the receiver are also a problem. Somebody tries to create artificial strategy. The doctor has prescribed this need to do a blood transfusion for patient A on this ward. The next thing the nurse says, you know, uh, yeah, uh, but, but, if you, but, we, but we can get it if, if, you, if you need something for us. Mm. Maybe if you give us some transport or what, we can try to get it. Somebody gets money 
and this money is never received officially anywhere. We really don't know about it. But, and and, but and it's not what we are promoting. No, true, what we are trying to do as a national blood bank, we are doing a campaign against blood cell. Every time we get a platform like this, we tell people that blood is at zero cost. Do not buy blood. Our blood bags in which this blood is the to transfuse have not for sale. Mm -hmm. Are written on not for sale. Let me ask you. We have question. car stickers. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, we are going to print quite more of them. We have posters in these health facilities. We're going to print many first, uh, posters, and maybe we shall give some of them to the media houses, so that every day you are going to make a presentation <laughs> here on, on TV. We showcase like, that. You showcase sure. it. All right. And my question. We, we, are, we are trying our best uh, to put efforts in place to ensure that people know blood is not for sale. All right. My question to you is, and it's good that you've said that some people were actually brought to book, meaning that it's no longer an allegation. There are people who are practicing that. Yeah. Now, my question is, mm. when you look at a patient who pays under the table mm. for them to get blood mm. for their patient, mm. this is a person who is desperate. We're talking about matters to do with life and death. Yeah. So as much as you're having this campaign where you're sensitizing the public and telling them you're not supposed to pay a penny yes. for blood, mm. do we have lines to provide for whistleblowing platforms? Yes, we, we have 12 free lines uh, at, uh, at our offices, people call. We have our office lines, which people can call directly. We have our individual lines, which people have used to call us and follow up some cases. The other day I, I was watching and I saw uh, drugs for the, uh, from National Medical Store yes. as drugs yes. started. Just like you see, uh, blood is like any other drug. We are still having those challenges. There are some elements mm -hmm. that are trying to sell blood in this head as well. Do we have the toll free numbers? Can we tell yeah, I, can, I can get it uh, for you and then you can. Okay. okay. Um, All right. Uh, Binta, one of these days I'm going to walk into Nina Interiors and I'm going to think I'm related to you. I'm going to walk in and be saying, like, where is Binta? Where is Binta? <laughs> and I, I want a table. But um, hopefully that, right. that that name can help me get a huge <laughs> discount. Yeah, no. um, uh, but um, uh, this is a, a great initiative. Mm. And um, my question will be, uh, how how many times do you plan on doing this? Is this, is this an annual event that you want to start carrying? On? Is it something that is has come once in a while? And yes, we understand where the thought comes from. You 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 want to, to really be there for your customers, and your customers uh, need blood, so you want to chip in with what you can do. But what is the plan? Do you plan on having this annually, or? Okay, uh, just to demystify one thing. Nina Interiors is, is not that expensive. It is affordable. <laughs> There's something for everyone at Nina Interiors. I still want that huge discount, yes. but we can go ahead. Yes. <laughs> then um, this is the first time we're doing this. And uh, it's not only because we are thinking Mother's Day is coming up or something like that, but because it's the first time and we are getting responses, we are looking into how we can continually do it because life is not just here and now. Right. It's a continuous process. And uh, surety of life tomorrow is, uh, is, is, is you know, what we, we thrive for as human beings. So we are trying to see how we can do this um, longer than just one just uh, one. Yes. yes. Uh, doctor, now, this, uh, sorry, um, because now you're, you're sorry, um, I'm talking about blood now. now but, um, uh, Mr. Mkundani, yes, yes. Uh, Nina Interiors, um, the, the initiative is awesome. It's it's it's, Very it's, awesome. it's it's awesome. Yeah. We need more people like 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 them to come through and and help. Yeah. But as they come through, have you had a deliberate effort to transform the minds of Ugandans? I am one of those people. I have a friend of mine that got me to donate the first time I did, and that was. I think about two years ago, two or three years ago, that for was the first time? time in my whole life. Mm -hmm. Do you have, are you thinking about a way of changing the mindset of Ugandans that we don't only wait for Nina Interiors to come up with an initiative like this mm -hmm. so that we can go and donate? Do, because people walk in and out of hospitals mm -hmm. every single day. Mm -hmm. and. I've never, I, well, maybe they're there, and I'm just not concentrating mm -hmm. enough. Mm -hmm. What, 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 we need to, uh, we need to have Malato have it in her head. I that have it every in my head. single <laughs> month. Okay, glad she has it. Yeah. I 
don't. Mm. <laughs> we need we need to have that in our head that we as Ugandans are responsible for each other. And once a month, there is no harm in me taking that effort and donating blood so that we don't wait. Yeah. It's not that it's a bad initiative by by yeah, the yeah. but we need to come up with. Yeah, yeah. One uh, is that uh, we have the initiative. We have the blood safety program. We have the blood program. We have the blood donor recruitment uh, department, fully composed. You always we wait for when, when, when mm -hmm. you're running out of blood no, and then no, it's in the papers and then... No, they are no, no, not really. We, it is our mandate to collect, test, process, and distribute <laughs> blood. It's the mandate. We have a transfusion policy. It's our mandate, and that is what we do. Our job as the National Blood Bank uh, is to collect blood and ensure that there is blood available for every patient that needs it. We have, in the whole country, we have 25 blood mobile collection teams. We have seven regional blood banks. Alua, Gulu, Mbali, uh, we have Masaka, we have Mbarara, we have Nakasero for Central Region, we have Fort Potro. All these uh, regional blood banks are in different regions of the country, as you have heard, and they are charged with the duty of ensuring there's adequate safe blood for our patients in those areas. All right. We have blood collection centers. Mm -hmm. The blood collection centers collect blood and feed in the regional blood banks where the testing and processing takes place. We have we also in Masaka, we have Soloti, we have in Hoima, we have in Jinja, we have in Kavali, we have in Rukunjiri. Th those are feeders of the regional blood banks. All right. When all this blood is collected and tested and processed, it's given or distributed to health facilities in need of it to treat severe anemia. So we are we're really all over. We have different strategies in which we collect blood. We collect it through the mobile teams, which are 22. Each are team sufficient? has two vehicles, and they work Monday to Sunday. Are they sufficient? Uh, we, we are increasing. They, they can never be sufficient. Mm -hmm. we, we would want to have 30. We would want to have many more teams, such that every other time, that, such that services are closer to the people. Correct. Instead of having one team in Soloti, let's have maybe three or four. You know, uh, but, but we are getting there. Okay. I can assure you, right. it's part of the government programs to ensure that the health sector is performing efficiently. Mm -hmm. So okay. I'll ask you this of course, we're having the blood donation drive, the yeah. 10th and 11th, yes. it is yeah. at Ninia Interiors. Um, your head office is at Ginger, Ginger, Road, Ginger yes. Road, right? But not every person is eligible to donate. So, yeah. who has the tick and the go ahead to turn up on that day? Uh, on that day, whoever is feeling well. If uh -huh. you are health-wise well, mm. you are feeling well, you are not on any medication, you, you're not having headache, you really qualify. That is the first thing. Okay. Are you feeling well? And then you, you have gained the courage and the confidence to say, I'm feeling well, I can share my blood with a patient okay. out there, okay. somebody out there. Okay. Uh, you're not on medication, you don't have history of chronic diseases, that may include the high blood pressure, the cancers, the, those uh, diseases that uh, you live with for quite a long time, then you don't have uh, infectious diseases, mm -hmm. those diseases that you can be contacted uh, from time from getting contact with people, syphilis, HIV AIDS, hepatitis B, hepatitis C. If you know you're free from such diseases, right. and in other words, you're very healthy, you do qualify to donate, you are not undergoing a menstrual periods mm. for ladies. Mm. You are not breastfeeding. Okay. So if you're not breastfeeding, you're not pregnant, you're not having any headache, and you're not on any medication, including painkillers uh, like Panadol. Right. You must have not taken anything like that. If you had headache in the morning and you took some Panadol, you really don't qualify to donate that day. And it's Ramadan. Those who are fasting, should they come? Uh, those who are fasting, please, we say, don't come to donate. Okay, thank yeah. you. Um, Binta. Yes. 
give us the details. Um, now we are set. We have been cleared uh, by um, Mr. Mkundane that now we can come and donate. We know. Yes. Yeah, unfortunately, I won't come and fasting, but uh, <laughs> no. Um, so give us the details. When do we come? What are the dates? What time and where? The blood donation will be happening at Nina Interiors. It's on Ginger Road next to National Water, opposite former WBS. Okay. Just after the lights. Yes. Yes. Nina Interiors right there. And that will be tomorrow, Friday and Saturday. So we have two days for people who are in office the whole of Friday. You can come down on Saturday and donate. And we will be running from 8 in the morning to 5 in the evening. However, uh, if you are there at 5.30, I don't think that blood will be re rejected. Mm. So, <laughs> so we take it. you will take it. Mm. So we will be um, running during those, those hours. Okay. Yes. Ah, all right. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, this morning on our Tech Note um, the discussion, we have been joined by Michael Mkundani, who happens to be uh, the, code, um, uh, the coordinator, blood donor recruitment at the Uganda Blood Transfusion Services. And uh, uh, patients Chikungo Binta, um, <laughs> the marketing <laughs> manager, uh, Nina Interiors. Thank you very much for the initiative. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for uh, making sure that uh, uh, all Ugandans, when they need blood, it is available for them. And of course, uh, we urge you, Ugandans, whoever is watching right now, and even those that are not watching, please tell them. Let's go to Nina Interiors Friday and Saturday from 8 a.m. from 8 a.m. to, to 5, 5 p.m. and let's donate blood. We are each other's keepers right okay. morning at ntv continues right after this thank you so much you're watching morning at ntv Mind-blowing beat mic is happening again. Yes, you had it.